The next item of business is a statement by John Swinney on the performance in Scottish education, the PISA 2018 results and achievement of Curriculum for Excellence Level 2018-19 statistics. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement, so there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I call on John Swinney. Cabinet Secretary, please. President Officer, I welcome the opportunity to update Parliament on the latest performance information we have on the Scottish education system. Last week, the PISA data for the 2018 survey was published, and this morning we have seen the 2018-19 achievement of CFE levels data, as well as the 2019 summary statistics for schools, which includes the latest data on teacher numbers. This material provides a range of information but sets out the progress that is being made in Scottish education. I want to start this statement by paying tribute to the hard work of all of the teachers, children and young people in our schools. I visit schools up and down the country and I see at first hand the talents of our young people and the commitment of teachers and other school staff who support them to achieve their potential. The school census data that we published this morning demonstrates that the action we are taking on teacher recruitment is working. That data shows that teacher numbers have increased for the fourth year in a row. The number of teachers in our schools has risen by 288 to 52,247 in 2019, an increase of more than 1,500 on 2014. This represents excellent progress, and we now have a 10-year high in the number of teachers. Even more striking is that primary teacher numbers are at their highest level since 1980, the highest level for 39 years. And I was also draw members' attention to the figures published on the 15th of November, which indicate that permanent teacher vacancies for primary and secondary schools combined have fallen from 606 to 382 in a year. The ratio of pupils to teachers nationally remains at its lowest since 2013. I am pleased that a large number of local authorities have either maintained or improved their teacher numbers and pupil-teacher ratios and we will continue working with partners to ensure that children in all local authorities benefit. Our focus on maintaining teacher numbers has allowed local authorities to take flexible decisions about how best to meet the needs of their schools and prevent increases in class sizes. The, dec the decrease from 511 to 267 in the number of P1 pupils in classes of 26 or more in 2018 is encouraging and equates to just around 10 classes in the whole of Scotland. The contrast to when we took office cannot be clearer when there were more than 16,000 P1 pupils in classes of 26 or more. That is real progress, but work to further improve recruitment continues. We are supporting universities in the development of new and alternative routes into teaching, including a focus on increasing the number of STEM teachers. These routes into teaching have attracted 800 people over the last two years who may not otherwise have entered teaching. We are again offering bursaries of £20,000 for career changers to under te teacher training in STEM subjects where the demand is at its greatest. A new phase of our recruitment campaign is also underway and we have added Napier and Queen Margaret Universities as teacher education providers. It is also important to recognise the role that other staff have in supporting children and young people in our schools. Our decision to have counsellors available to support young people's mental health in every secondary school in Scotland, the first of whom will begin work this year, is a significant step forward. As is the £15 million per year that we announced in the programme for government to provide enhanced support to children with additional support needs. I'm also encouraged, presiding officer, by today's achievement of CFE levels data. Firstly, I welcome the chief statistician's decision to remove the experimental label from this data. This is a clear indicator of the positive work that has been done by teachers and local authorities, supported by Education Scotland and the Regional Improvement Collaboratives, to ensure the quality and consistency of teacher professional judgments. Secondly, I'm encouraged that the data itself is positive, demonstrating as it does that Scotland is moving in the correct direction. The International Council of Education Advisors has indicated to me that we should be aiming to make a series of incremental gains gains of the type that were now evident in Scotland in order to deliver sustainable improvement. The achievement of Curriculum for Excellence level data provides, for the second year running, increases in attainment across all four of the key outcome measures, for example, a rise of around one percentage point in primary literacy and secondary num numeracy. The latter is particularly welcome in the light of last week's PISA results, which showed that we have more progress to make in maths. When looking at the data in more detail, 
It shows that in each of the reading, writing, listening and talking and numeracy at P1, P4 and P7, the results on most indicators show an improvement. S3 results show a similar picture at both third level and fourth level. I'm also pleased to see that the data demonstrates that we're making progress on equity. Attainment among the most disadvantaged children and young people rose in numeracy at all stages and in reading and writing at P1, P4 and P7. The attainment gap between the most and the least disadvantaged has narrowed on most indicators. For example, the gap in P1 literacy has closed by one percentage point. It is almost two percentage points for P7 literacy. While the overall picture is positive, there are, of course, local variations within the figures. And we, and we will be working with Education Scotland and local authorities over the coming year to support improvement. While this is only the fourth year of achievement of Curriculum for Excellence level data, it is clearly demonstrating that we are on the right track. We are beginning to see the system-wide benefits of the system-wide reforms that we have introduced. We are seeing some progress towards closing the poverty-related attainment gap. This is encouraging and has been further emphasised by the data that we see today. In order to keep up the momentum, I want to signal to the education system today that the government will maintain its focus on closing the poverty-related attainment gap and we have published an updated national improvement framework and improvement plan today which sets out that continuity of direction. I am determined that the system should benefit from a clear focus to ensure the improvement work that is being undertaken across the Scottish education system has time to become embedded. The International Council advised me that the challenge now is to deepen the level of progress and impact and that is what we intend to do. Turning to last week's PISA results, it is important that Parliament hears accurately the outcome of the survey and what the PISA data showed us. What we see in the PISA data is a sharp recovery in the results on reading. That is very welcome and it comes from a determination after the last PISA results to make a focus of our attainment challenge on improving literacy. According to independent statisticians, performance in maths and science is stable. I do not deny that there is a challenge here. While performance in science and maths is stable and in line with the OECD average, it must improve. And initiatives that we have underway now, such as the STEM education and training strategy, or the STEM bursaries, or the work around making maths count, are all about making sure that we improve performance there as well. It is also really important to see the PISA data in context. I have already spoken about the positive CFE levels data and there is a wealth of other evidence. Performance in, ex in higher exam passes in Scotland is improving, both in terms of the proportion of young people leaving with hires and the closing of the attainment gap in higher results. How these things are counted has changed over the years, so we cannot always make direct comparisons. But where we can, we find that those getting a higher or better is up from 50.4% in 2009-10 to 62.2% in 2017-18. We are now seeing record numbers of young people from all backgrounds going into positive destinations. We are seeing more young people from more disadvantaged communities going into university. There is a lot of good news in Scottish education. This is a tribute to the hard work of young people and their teachers, but it is not job done. The Scottish Government remains absolutely committed to ensuring that we continue to see that improvement, sustained improvements across the education system. Teacher numbers are at the highest level in 10 years. We are seeing incremental gains in attainment across the broad general education. And while parts of the attainment gap remain stubborn, there are initial signs of improvement. In September, the International Council of Education Advisors were clear that I should not let the PISA results, no matter what they showed, provide a distraction from our long-term goals. The Council advised that based on the evidence, Scotland is heading in the right direction and taking the right approach to improving education. I value and welcome that advice. I believe that the direction of travel is the right one, the data supports that view, and our responsibility now is to keep a strong focus on continued improvement. Now is the time to stay the course as per the advice of our experts, and that is what the Government intends to do. Thank you very much.
The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in his statement. I can, I can tend to allow around 20 minutes for questions, after which we must move on to the next item of business. It would be helpful if members who wish to ask questions now press the request of buttons to speak. And I call Liz Smith, followed by Ian Gray. Ms Smith, please. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for early sight of his statement? And I'm pleased that, notwithstanding some welcome improvements in the trends that he's mentioned, he is admitting that there are significant challenges remaining uh, within the Scottish Government's education policy and its aims. In that context, I would like to ask the Cabinet Secretary three things. Firstly, can I ask the Cabinet Secretary to explain to this Parliament why he is so convinced that we have better school attainment data than we have ever had before, which was his quote last week, because that is an opinion that is at completely at odds with the view of Scotland's educational e experts, including the Commission on School Reform, which said last week that the data set is the poorest that it has been since the 1950s, and Professor Patterson, who is arguing that in light of this, effective policy making is undermined. Secondly, in that respect, will he now accept the recommendations of the Commission on School Reform that Scotland should rejoin both the Pearls and Tim's international measures and that there should now be a new sample survey of performance in the key curricular areas of broad general education. And finally, will he tell the Parliament why, despite some improvement in teacher numbers, there remain 2,835 fewer teachers since the SNP came to power when the pupil cohort is rising and whether, like many secondary schools, he believes that that is having a negative effect on subject choice. Cabinet Secretary. <clears throat> uh, let me address the first two questions that Liz Smith has raised uh, together because they relate to the same issue of the quality and the range of information that was available. Um, we participate in the PISA uh, exercise, which is an international survey. It was published last week and we intend to continue to participate in that survey. Um, the problem with um, sample surveys such as the uh, Scottish Survey on Literacy and Numeracy is that when there is an issue to be confronted, which there was in 2015, the sample survey does not tell us where the problems lie. It tells us generically that there is an issue, but it doesn't tell us where the problems lie. And I'm interested in solving where the problems lie. And what the data that we now have available to us, which is assembled pupil by pupil, from every single school in the country, gives us a picture of what is the performance. In the data that's available, Liz Smith can go and she can look at the relative performance of local authority area versus local authority area. And I highlighted in my statement that local variation, which we need to confront as a country to ensure that the educational needs of young people are being met. And all of that, of course, flows into the National Improvement Framework uh, data that we gather and which we've published an update of in, uh, today, which sets out the various measures that we look at, which we consulted upon, which I thought we'd reach some broad agreement about as being the measures that had to be looked at to assess the closure of the poverty-related attainment gap. So I firmly believe we have got uh, a comprehensive data set available to all of us to judge the progress of Scottish education. On Elizabeth's final point, um, she talked about teacher numbers, and I'm really pleased that we're at a 10-year high in teacher numbers. I think that's a really welcome step. I think it's come about as a consequence of the investment. And she asked me to explain what the challenge has been about teacher numbers. And I shall give her it in one word, austerity. Yep. Austerity yep. Yep. from yep. the Conservative yep. government. Yep. And yep. if Liz Smith doesn't know that austerity has been the problem undermining our public services for the last nine years under the Conservative government. If Lisbeth doesn't understand austerity, then she doesn't understand the suffering that's been experienced by people in Scotland and why we should get rid of the Conservative government on Thursday. Ian Gray will be followed by Ross Gear. Mr Gray. Uh, thank you, and my thanks also to the Cabinet Secretary for early sight of his statement. Let me agree... Uh, with the Cabinet Secretary about the hard work and achievement of our teachers uh, and young people. Uh, yet this is done in spite of one of the heaviest teacher workloads in the developed world. Twelve years ago, the SNP were elected on a promise, a promise, to cut class sizes to less than 18 in primaries one to three. The figures released today 
do show us that, in fact, since 2007, we have 2,853 fewer teachers, that average primary class sizes are bigger, uh, and that the pupil-teacher ratio has increased. There are more pupils in early primary classes bigger than 18 uh, than there were when the SNP took office, never mind none as promised. And as for uh, only 10 primary one classes bigger than 25 pupils, Cabinet Secretary, nine years ago, we legislated to make the P1 class size maximum 25. So perhaps uh, you should be explaining to us why there are any classes of that size at all in primary, primary one. Presiding officer, will the Cabinet Secretary, instead of blaming others or picking random years for comparison, just be honest and admit that the SNP record on education is fewer teachers and bigger class sizes? Cabinet Secretary. I, I, I suppose it would be predictable to expect Mr Gray to, uh, to trot out the same response. And, and as for um, me blaming others, I think the only people I blamed in this statement was the Conservatives for Austerity. And from what I could make out, it seemed as if the Labour Party were supporting the Conservative Party on austerity from all the shouting that was going on while I was answering the question. Now, what Mr Gray's uh, Mr Gray um, has acknowledged that we have uh, more teachers in our classrooms today. I'm really pleased we've got a 10-year high in teacher numbers. It shows that the investment the government is making, despite austerity, has having an effect on the presence of teachers within our country. He will know from the negotiations that we've undertaken with our professional associations that the government is tackling the issue of teacher workload and much progress has been made on that with the work that we've taken on unit assessments, with the other work that has been undertaken to streamline teacher workload through the pay agreement. And the, uh, I hear Mr Gray muttering about the EIS. The EIS are fully working with us in partnership on the issues about tackling teacher workload, so he should get out a little bit more and speak to his trade union colleagues if he wants. And finally, I think it's really welcome that we don't have 16,000 P1 pupils in classes of 26 or more any longer. That's now down to 267, and that's because of the investment this government has made. Thank you. Now, before I call Ross Greer, I expect the first two questioners to have been quite entitled to long questions and longer answers, but I've now got 11 people wanting to ask questions. I want to get you all in, so short questions, please, and if I may say so, can I have snappy answers, if possible? Ross Greer, followed by Alec Cole Hamilton. Mr Greer. Thank you, and thanks to the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of his statement, though I have to say how frustrating it is that his obfuscation is trying to hide the fact that there are 2,800 fewer teachers than there were when the SNP took office, and no spin can hide that. Now, I accept that the S3 attainment data... Now, I ask for a question, so I want a question. Show what, show what can be done. Yep. I accept that the S3 attainment data is used to measure the attainment gap, but the S4 attainment data shows that the gap is growing at five times the rate it's closing in S3. Does the Deputy First Minister know why? And if not, will he undertake to find out and report that back to Parliament? Thank you. Cabinet Secretary. I think what, what Mr Greer will see from the data is that there is now 90% of young people achieving level three in S3, which is exactly what we want them to achieve, but a growing number of young people achieving level four uh, as part of uh, the, the, their achievements in S3. Now, obviously, young people move on in S4 into the, broad, the, the senior phase. They are able to make their choices about what pathways are appropriate for them, and they will make their judgments accordingly based on the wide range of choices now available within Scottish education. Uh, but what we are determined to do is to make sure that at every stage in our education system, uh, poverty is not a disadvantage to young people achieving their potential, and we see the fulfilment of that with the improving position on access to university for young people from deprived backgrounds. Alec Cole Hamilton, followed by Claire Adams. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. The SNP government has spent the best part of a week celebrating stagnation and far fewer teachers than when they took office. Teachers are at their wits' end with this government. In order to show them the respect that they deserve and relieve the pressure on them, will the Scottish Government now commission Macron too to fill in the gaps and restore support in our classrooms? Thank you. Cabinet Secretary. Well, uh, despite the austerity that was ushered in by the Liberal and Conservative government in 2010, the government has managed to increase teacher numbers to a 10-year high. And I think if Mr, um, if Mr Cole Hamilton had been noticing, he would have noticed a comprehensive pay deal with the teacher professional associations earlier on this year, which related not just to pay, 
but to workload and a variety of other issues which was supported um, by a massive margin by the teacher professional associations, which I think re re represents a, a degree of satisfaction with the negotiation which we were able to conclude with the professional associations. Thank you, Claire Adamson, followed by Alison Harris. Thank you, Presiding Officer. This, the Curriculum for Excellence Level Data published a day which is on an individual pupil basis and which includes both primary and secondary schools shows an improvement in achievement in almost all areas and particularly in numeracy. Given the concerns around the PISA results last week, does this, um, should this give reassurance to parents and carers and pupils that the actions been taken by this government are the right ones? Cabinet Secretary. Officer, in the attainment challenge which was formulated in 2015, we prioritised improvements in literacy and we saw in the PISA survey last week the manifestation of that. We are now seeing within primary and secondary education, within broad general education, a much stronger focus on enhancing numeracy activity and numeracy interventions. Um, I think the indications in the data today are encouraging and we obviously, with the clarity I have given, about constancy of direction in education policy, schools can rely upon the support and investment that we've made to increase performance in numeracy as well. Alison Harris, followed by Rona Mackay. Thank you. Firstly, I would like to declare an interest as I'm the Finance Director of Relationship Scotland Counselling Central Scotland. It's a very welcome decision to have counsellors available in every secondary school to support pupils, especially with the rise of mental health issues affecting school children. Whilst there are many adult counsellors available, currently there is a shortage of, and of appropriately trained and qualified young persons counsellors. So my question to the Cabinet Secretary is, what is the government doing to address this shortage in order to achieve its commitment of placing counsellors in every Thank secondary school? Thank you, Cabinet school? Secretary. Uh, well, we're, we're obviously involved in a, a recruitment and training exercise with our local authority partners to enable this to be the case. Um, Alison Harris highlights the importance of early intervention through the availability of mental health counsellors in secondary schools. That is exactly why we have taken the step that we have taken to ensure that is the case. And we are working with our local authority partners to make sure that recruitment and training process can be undertaken to ensure that capacity is in place during the school year. Rona Mackay, followed by Daniel Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The school census data published this morning clearly demonstrates that the action the Scottish Government is taking on teacher recruitment is working. Can the Cabinet Secretary tell the Chamber how the ratio of teachers to pupils in Scotland compares with elsewhere in the UK? Cabinet Secretary. I can, Presiding Officer. In primary schools in Scotland, there were 15.9 pupils per teacher in Scotland, compared to 20.9 in England, 22 in Wales and 22.3 in Northern Ireland. And in secondary schools, there were 12.4 pupils per teacher in Scotland, compared to 16.3 in England, 17 in Wales and 15.7 in Northern Ireland. Daniel Johnson, followed by Fulton McGregor. If we are going to learn the lessons from the PISA results, we need to be frank about what they say. So if we acknowledge that these results are part of a 20-year downward trend, will the Cabinet Secretary acknowledge that the reading results, which he describes as an improvement, are simply a return to 2003 levels, which is stated in the report. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, they're, they're, uh, they're, they're an improvement in the performance in reading. That's what they are. So we're moving in the right direction in reading. I'm not overclaiming them. I'm claiming that we're on the right direction, that our interventions are stimulating an improvement in reading practice. And we now need to make sure that the same happens in relation to um, uh, numeracy uh, in, in relation to maths and science and the indications from the curriculum for excellence level data is that we are taking steps which are supporting that direction so I'm entirely focused on delivering improvement in the Scottish education system that is what I am here to support and to encourage and I think from the detail that we've seen today we are seeing that evidence emerging of that improvement in practice. Fould, Fould McGregor followed by Oliver Mundell. Thank you, President Officer. The, the 2019 Summary Statistics for Schools, which was also published today, adds to the range of information that sets out the progress that has been made in Scottish education, including data on teacher numbers. Can the Cabinet Secretary therefore outline what further action the Scottish Government is taking to improve teacher recruitment? Cabinet Secretary. President Officer, we've put in place um, about nearly a dozen new routes into teaching which are attracting new candidates who ordinarily would have found it difficult to pursue the traditional routes into teaching. Um, we've put in place STEM bursaries, which are encouraging people to um, move from careers um, in 
uh, the, the STEM subjects to move into STEM teacher training with a £20,000 uh, bursary arrangement in place, which is attracting a range of candidates. And I'm very pleased with the way in which these uh, new routes have attracted individuals to make their contribution to teaching. Um, I see many of these individuals now making their way into the education system, where I think they're making a profound effect on the teaching and learning for young people and also on supporting their colleagues to enhance their, their continuous professional development. Oliver Mundell, followed by John Mason. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Given the clear challenges we've heard today, does the Cabinet Secretary take any personal responsibility for the state of Scottish education? Cabinet I, 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 Mr Mundell knows me well enough. I don't shirk my responsibilities. Of course I take my responsibilities deadly seriously. That's why I'm here to improve Scottish education. But equally, Mr Mundell must take responsibility for the shocking levels of austerity that his government in London have inflicted on young people in Scotland, massively increasing child poverty and forcing children to go to school hungry. That's what Mr Mundell's delivered for Scottish education. John Mason followed by Mary Fee. Uh, thank you. Does the Cabinet Secretary feel that the PISA system does give an overall view of the whole of Scottish education? Because there has been criticism from academics around the world, and the emphasis, while important, does seem to be on mathematics, science and reading, and ignores anything about physical education, moral education, civil, artistic, and these things. Cabinet Secretary. I think the, 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 the PISA data is one element of the information that we have to look at. It's not the only element, it's one element. Equally, the achievement of curriculum for excellence levels is not the only, level, only information we've got to look at. We've got to look at a range of evidence. That's why the government produced the National Improvement Framework with all of the measurement data which is in, contained within that to give us a broad picture of the, um, the, the, the wider achievement of the education system. Now, it, there will be a development in the uh, PISA system which will look at, um, at wider competencies, uh, which will address some of the issues that Mr Mason has raised, um, and that information will be available in due course. If my memory says me right, I think that's available in 2020. It's not a, uh, an element of the survey we are compelled to be part of, but we have opted to be part of that because we recognise it will give us valuable information on the breadth of the effect of Curriculum for Excellence. Mary Fee, followed by Bill Kidd. Whilst the marginal improvement in narrowing the attainment gap is welcome, statistics show that the gap still increases as the child progresses through the school. What specific steps will the Scottish Government take to tackle this damaging trend? Cabinet Secretary. What we have to make sure is that we are constantly supporting young people at every stage in their development to ensure that we close the poverty related attainment gap. That's why we've made the investment and are making the investment in the early year sector that we are making so that at the earliest possible opportunity we act to narrow that gap and to support the learning of young people. Now there's a variety of ways in which that can be done. An important element is about family support and family support for learning, which is a critical part of ensuring that young people are able to fulfil their potential. So as we, um, as we take forward the early years expansion, the support for family uh, learning and family engagement, um, I, I want to make sure that the individual needs of young people who face challenges within our education system particularly because of their background, that we are addressing those in the way that's envisaged through the, the, the Scottish Attainment Challenge and that focus on making sure that every young person is able to fulfil their potential. And finally, Bill Kidd. Thank you. In 2018, the ICEA said they wished to commend the Scottish Government for its dual focus on excellence and equity. It's now central to policy formation and policy implementation within the Scottish education system. So given these comments and recognition of the evidence of progress in closing the gap, can the Scottish Government emphasise the importance of keeping focus on this long-term task? Cabinet Secretary. It, my, my, my comment in my statement earlier on, Presiding Officer, where I made clear that the government would uh, remain very firm in its focus on closing the poverty-related attainment gap by the pursuit of excellence and equity within our education system was designed to give utter clarity of purpose to the education system that they will not have to deal with some change in government policy uh, in the foreseeable future. The government is committed to this agenda. The education system has responded powerfully and emphatically to that agenda. And I hope the clarity that I've given today it responds adequately to the issue that Mr Kidd has raised and given line of sight to our education system across the country. Uh, thank you. That concludes questions. Can I thank all members who have uh, allowed us to get everyone in with their questions? We have a short pause before we move on to the next item of business.